<laughs> so Simon is joining us all the way in Techiman. Simon, good evening. How are you doing? Good evening. I'm doing good. How are you doing? I am fantastic. Thank you so much for asking. So we are going to take a look at our story. And right after the story, we will start the conversation. So please listen to our story carefully. So it says, Dear Real Talk, I have a big decision to help and guidance to make the right one. I'm about to get married soon. Before getting here, my fiancé and I had agreed that we will rent a place while we save towards building or getting a mortgage. We are both young in our late 20s. A month ago, my fiancé came up with this suggestion. He wants us to move in with his parents after marriage so that we keep the rent money and add it to our mortgage savings. So she continues to say, he says his parents are by themselves and old so the company and the help they will get from us will be good but this wasn't our plan i don't want to live with my in-laws this is not to say that they are bad people that is not the case but i think as a young couple we need our privacy and independence sharing a home with his parents can bring so many issues i asked him how long we can stay with them and he isn't forthcoming with an answer I think he doesn't want to either pay rent or he's still comfortable in his parents' home. The issue is weighing on my mind so much that I am beginning to get stressed and wondering if marrying him is even the right decision. The Bible said a man must leave his parents and cleave to his wife. Will he be leaving his parents if he brings his wife to stay with them? Am I asking for too much? Yes, rent isn't cheap, but his option too isn't favorable. Please help me. Yes, that is our job for <laughs> us today. It's been cut out for us so clear. And we are going to try and have a conversation where we find solutions. We find um, tips that will help this young lady and her soon-to-be husband, hopefully. And we hope that at the end of the conversation, as we always wish, at Real Talk, we hope that at the end of the conversation, we will find some good solutions for her, good guidance for her. One that is obviously Christ-led to help her with this head decision. So I'll start with you, Sissi Abi. Um, what went through your mind when you heard the story? <laughs> um, good evening to your listeners uh, <laughs> and to your viewers. Yeah. Um, so for me, the first thing was I needed some clarification. Mm. Um, when he says, let's move in to my parents' house, mm. um, what is he talking about? Mm. Um, you know when you go to Kumasi, they have what they call Kumasi Fi. Okay. It's a big house. It has lots of apartments. Okay. You know, everybody has their own apartment. Mm. Is that the kind of thing he's talking about, you know, mm. or is it an apartment building, you know, where the parents are on the ground floor ah. and they are going to be on the first floor? Okay. Or is it a, a big house where they'll be in the main house mm -hmm. and then they would be in the boys' quarters? Ah. Or is he talking about them living in the same space? Mm. So it's two things. Yeah. Is it his parents' house or space? It has to be clear. Yeah. Because yeah. the two are quite different. You could be in the same house, but not sharing the same space. Yeah. The challenge is when you are sharing the same space. Yeah. yeah. Even in the same house with different apartments, it has its own challenges. True. But in the same space, mm. that is another level altogether. Mm. So we would mm. have to clarify, what is he talking about? Mm. Is it that his parents are living in a two, three bedroom house and he wants to bring his wife so they join his parents in that two, three bedroom house where they share the same kitchen and living room? Is that what he's talking about? Okay, so with the background information I have from this story is leading towards the option of the same space where it's a house and they move in if the boy has a bedroom mm -hmm. they move in into his bedroom yes and they share the hall and the kitchen <laughs> and the bathroom as they would have it and that's why she's very adamant in saying that oh i do not want to live with them but uh maybe we, if we have time you can also talk of the other situations where mm -hmm. people get to stay in their apartment mm -hmm. and then they share maybe the gates and then the, the ground. The gates of the compound, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So we'll look into that. Um, I'll come to you. I'll come to Patience. Patience, I know you're married. Um, I don't think you're living with your in-laws, but what is your general take on this story? What came to mind when you read this story? 
you know, <laughs> this is a very interesting story. And um, just right now that you you did the clarification, it mm-hmm. made a lot of sense to me. For mm-hmm. me, I didn't even think about um, the part where they shared the same gate that um, the sister was talking about. I didn't even look at it that way because in the States, that's really happening. I mean, when you talk about in-laws living with you or living in your with your in-laws, it means the same house. Oh. Hmm. Chances are, yes, it means the same house. Chances are you'll be sharing the same bathroom and all that stuff. So um, unless maybe it's a, it's a bigger house and then there's two bathrooms, that's the only way it can be split. But for me, reading this story, I only channeled it to the same space. Mm. Um, mm. That's because that's what I'm used to. However, channeling it to the same space situation. Um, when you this is a very important conversation for um a couple to have before marriage and i'm glad this came up before they got married rather than you know while the after the wedding day i saying i do the man is going to be like let's go to my parents house that's a whole different story but this is very important that they're discussing this prior to the marriage i think i personally think that um when we talk about marriage each person was raised by different parents. Mm. So when you come together, you are now coming to learn each other's character. Right. You're gonna learn the personality, you're gonna learn your likes and dislike, you're gonna say, uh, you're gonna talk about it, somebody's gonna hurt you because they don't know that it hurts you. And then you're gonna correct the person, I, I don't know what's happening. I don't know if a bed has found its way on. Now, this is a very okay. challenging to do when you are doing it in the in the presence of your in, in-law. You know, it's, it's a very challenging thing to do when you're doing it in the presence of your in-law. And moreover, uh, when it comes to having privacy as a married couple, oh, oh. Oh, having wow. privacy, the internet's connection is so terrible, patience. I don't know if you would. When the kids come in, I just. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah, I can. It's just that like you keep breaking off at some point. So I don't know if it's the positioning of your internet connectivity, but there's a break in when you talk sometimes. But kindly um, oh. finish with this part, then maybe you could try and log in and then. We'll come back to it. Okay. Um. Can you hear me any better? Yes, I can. Okay. Okay. All right. Great. Um. The point I was trying to make is that during the first year of marriage, it is very important that the couple learns each other. Mm. So to say that you are moving in to an in-laws house during that first year is very challenging mm. because when you start having kids, the the couple lose privacy. Mm all together so if you use your first year to live in your in-laws house and after you lay you leave that house to go live on your own and there are kids that means the couple never had chance to be on their own and learn each other yeah so for me i think that um the 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 man the the, the one thing that bothers me about this whole thing is the fact that they are capable of renting a place the fact that they're trying to save the money, the man trying to save the money means that they are capable of using that money to get a place. Hmm. But the fact that the man capable of getting his own place still insists in living with the, um, his parents is questionable. Okay. That means he has a responsibility issue hmm. because if a man would do this, it has to be maybe they are not capable, maybe he lost his job or something. But you are able to rent a place, but you want to hold on to your money and rely on your parents. That alone is very tricky for me to understand a man that would not want to take their own responsibilities, but rather push it on their parents. So, Evie, for me, I <laughs> think that it's it, it has a question for me with the responsibility of the man. Okay. And the man that cannot take care of 
the new family that he's about to start, it's a problem. It's a problem. Patients think it's a responsibility issue with a man. Simon, you are the only man in the studio or joining us for this conversation. So I'll take your opinion on the story. What is going through your mind? What do you think is happening here? Any thoughts on that? Well, thank you very much. Good evening to you, viewers. Good evening. When I read the story, when I read the story, the first thing that came to my mind was, wow. This decision should be coming from the female side, not the male side. Why am I saying this? Because I have been a witness to some circumstances and situations like this, when my colleagues are involved with such acts and the acts where it has led them is very terrible. As I speak to you now, I have a, a, a situation that is in court, which is waiting for a court determination as to whether or not the couple should still get married or should be separated, all because they will be living in their in-laws premises. So as a man taking such a decision, to me, I may say that maybe the man did not do his very homework very well before even getting married or before even planning to get married. If he should have done his very homework very well. This court wouldn't have even popped up in the first place. Mm. Because living in your in-law's house is very dangerous. It's very, very dangerous. It, it can collapse your marriage. So when I read the story, I was shocked. Okay. And it's coming from a man. I, 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 I really condemn that. Okay. So Simon is shocked. Sissy, Abby, um, so living with in-laws, are there good sides to it? Are there bad sides to it? The whole dynamic of living with in laws. <laughs> I just wanted to speak. I about mean, that. Um, like I said in the beginning, mm -hmm. so now that we've clarified it, mm -hmm. he's talking about living in the same space right. with his parents. Yes. And because he has lived with his parents all this while, he thinks it will be easy for the wife to also live with his parents. And that may not be right. Mm. Because the fact that you think that it's possible doesn't mean that it's going to work out. Mm. The reasons he gives for wanting to live with his parents is that one, they want to save yeah. so they can build their own. And mm -hmm. then two, keep Let his go. parents' company. And help. And help. Mm -hmm. First one, if I were the lady, I would ask him, so you've been living with them all this while. How much money have you been able to save? If you've been with them for a year or two years when you started working, mm. realistically, Tell me on paper, how much money have you been able to save? Mm. So if you come and say, oh, by living with them, I've been able to save this much mm. by myself. So when you come and join me, we'll save it. Even that, it's something we have to consider. Right. So you don't come and say, let's do this. Mm. If you bring that on paper, it's a something that we have to consider, not something we have to do at all cost. Right. So you come with that suggestion, oh, by living with my parents, I've been able to save a thousand CDs a month. So when you come, I think we can save a thousand five. Mm. So can we consider that? If she thinks that it's not going to work out for her, it's a no-go area. Okay. Because you would not sacrifice the sanctity of your marriage, the sanity of your wife. You would not sacrifice that for the comfort or the money that you'll be making. Money comes and goes. And he, he's thinking about the perfect situation, all things being equal, right. who save money. But you never know what's going to happen after marriage. Anything can happen. Situations can change. So how long are you going to stay there? If you marry and you go, then things change. Because like she said, she's been asking him, how long are we going to stay yeah. here? There's an entry point. Mm -hmm. When is the exit, exit point? Right. He's not able to say. So if he's not able to clarify all these, it's not, it should not even be on the table for consideration. Mm. If he's able to say all these, then we, we may consider. consider. Because family dynamics are different. Yes. You know, he knows his parents very well. Yes. But your wife may not know your parents as well. Right. And in the, you know, when a man marries a woman, you become the head of the home. Mm. So if you're asking that you move within the same space, who's Who the head it? of that home? His is father. Is it you or your father? His father, that's his father's house. So, exactly. <laughs> so if your, your father is the head of the home, 
that you are supposed to be ahead of, mm. how is that going to work? Who decides when you do what and how you do it? Who gives the instruction? You understand? So in his mind, I don't know what is going in, on in his mind, thinking that, oh, it could work. He hasn't tried it before. Mm -hmm. So he's just thinking, oh, I think mm -hmm. this would work. Mm -hmm. But it will interest you to know that even for him, if he tries it, he would realize that, oh, this was a terrible idea. And in the same space, yeah. no. Yeah. In the same house, different apartments, yes, maybe we can consider that. Mm -hmm. But in the same space, where well, we are sharing bathrooms kitchen. and living rooms and kitchen, kitchen, which is the heart of the home, kitchen. which is a very special place <laughs> for the woman. Our office. But there's another woman. That's another woman's <laughs> exactly. office. That's right. another woman's office. Right. And you are sharing with her. Mm -hmm. So she decides what happens. You understand? You cannot be the head of a home in another man's house. house. I hmm. don't see how that's going to work. That resonates so well. So are there, is there, okay, let's, are there positives to this living with in-law things? Will you get some pros that you say, oh, because of this and this and this is a good idea. And then also because of this and this and this is a bad idea, especially for this particular okay. story. So for this particular story, I don't see that there's any positive coming out of it. Okay. Because the lady has made it very clear that she doesn't want to do it. You see, it's not impossible to do. There are persons who would be okay living in the same space with their, with their in-laws. Mm. That is an advantage. Because maybe the parents are there, like you said, we can help them do one mm -hmm. or two things. Mm -hmm. They can also help us when children start coming in. We, have, we, we want someone to leave their children with whilst we go to work, you know. You want somebody to help you take care when the baby comes. Those are some of the few advantages I can think of. Mm. But she not agreeing, that is a big disadvantage because she's not going to be free in that space. In space. So that one makes it, you know, I don't see what kind of advantage you can get when the other partner you know, whom you're supposed to stay together with, mm -hmm. doesn't even agree in the first place. Yeah. I don't see how that, any advantage can come out of that. Out of that. Because she has to be free in her own space. You know, she has to be able to touch her husband whenever she wants to. She has to be able to walk around in her house any way she wants to. Mm. So if she's not able to do that, because there are some people who don't care. They can stay, in, they go to work, they come back and they are locked up in their room. Yeah. They don't go anywhere, they are yeah. in their room. So for such, such a person, it's okay. I can manage until we build our own. But for somebody who wants her freedom to move around, I don't see any advantage over there. Oh. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Before I come to you, patients, let me come to Simon because, again, he's the only man here. Um, you know, Simon, what, as a man, putting yourself in the man's shoes, what could be some of the possible reasons why this man suddenly says, you know what, we rent again, let's move in with my parents and save and build or get a mortgage. What do you think, what is his thought process? How did he even come up with this suggestion? Thank you very much. I only see two things that may possibly prove, push the man to move into his in-law's house. That is refusing to take responsibility. Hmm. He thinks that maybe when I move to my in-law's house, all the utility will be paid. And therefore, I will be able to save more for maybe future plans. But look, let me tell you something. If you are a man, and you don't take up responsibility like such things, it will be very difficult to be able, be able to make productive decisions. Hmm. Two, only way that a man you should agree to move to your in-law's house is when maybe your wife has given birth and you want you want a helping hand. And for that one day, I think it is the best way because when you move there, you may get a lot of help from your in-laws, your siblings, and then anybody who is living around. But quite apart from that, I do not see any reason why a man should take such a, a, a decision. Because moving to your in-law's house, it means that you are going to be restricted in so many things. And it will really have to be So as a man, except with the fact that you are running away from your responsibility, except with the fact that maybe the work that you are doing is not moving, even that one shouldn't even be an example. It shouldn't even be an excuse. Let me put it that way. As a man, you must stand up and take responsibility, whether you like it or yes. Except in certain circumstances, like I just said, maybe your wife has given birth and then you are moving in so that you can help, the, the in-laws can help in raising their children. But quite apart from that, I, I, I totally condemn that decision that the man take. 
I totally condemn and I do not agree that uh, it should happen because it is very dangerous. It has so many disadvantages. And the only advantage that I, in my side I can talk of is the two that I have laid down. Hmm. Quite apart from that, I think it's dangerous. Okay, so Simon says he totally disagrees. It's a dangerous idea. You shouldn't even entertain it. We'll have to go for a quick break. When we come back, we will look at what the Bible says about leaving and cleaving. We'll look at how we can solve this problem. And finally, what this lady should do. Do not go anywhere. This is Real Talk. We'll be right back after the break. This 21st century is living beyond 100 possible. Are chronic diseases reversible? How can we live a stress, addiction, and suicide free lifestyle? It's time for a new start. Hope Channel, in partnership with New Live Hospital, presents to you the Health and Wellness Summit from the 5th to the 8th of March 2022 at the New Live Hospital. Bamiri Road, Techima. Come and hear from Dr. Morris Mensah, Pastor Prince Kwesia Mwako, Mrs. Baba Hammond, and many others. There will be free health screening. For sponsorship and product display during the event, call 024-919-3083. The Health and Wellness Summit is brought to you by Hope Channel and sponsored by New Leaf Hospital with support from the Advent Press, Valley View University, and the Adventist Church. Official radio partner, Asta FM, Techima. Mapping couldn't be set a full from crime. Meaning, I say, a bob wire and one wire, young Kenyan show. You ain't an amenda from your four man, never one mamma or one mess at Ghana conference, a car one bomb. I ain't sure a cook for that. I want to enter our bravo machine. Wabenada, Benenda, a decay. The person never see a dow, Benenda, it's also seen our simple share. And you know, so seven year, or by our was to buy a power armory. Melkwa, you may be more to ten day, Dindy, and never bring pride in some water soon see. And in the four benum to so right, you're a Christiana, a genuine blessing. Nepasta. Isaac, I'm one, sir. Name, I'm a Patricia Glabo. If you see us, I know you, ma, seek us some home to you. I'm for my day in the near Kekan home. If you see us, I know you, sir, man, I don't go to the dear. I had a good do, I a dry, this shit in fear. Hope TV, you may dear, what you did, or by power, he enters a missing. Baba, you may dear, I see me. A man in an army or rare, you read my ma or pon, necessary, you may dear. A soft word, you may dear, see one, sir, so, and make better than your dance, so, Pastor Emmanuel and Katia. So, Ped, you may dear, you moon tree, moon be a rare, fray, and one who may so. And I share it. It was Zoom, I bet for Panso. That quick break. Sometimes I I want you guys to see the behind the scenes of this show. <laughs> Maybe you should have an episode of behind the scenes to see the interesting things that go on when we are offline. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. We are still in the studios of Hope TV Ghana, coming your way with real talk. Today I'm having an interesting conversation on living with in-laws. So this young woman is about to get married. So um, she and her husband-to-be had decided that they would rent when they marry and save towards building or getting a mortgage. And um, this her husband-to-be comes and says, oh, I want us to live in, with my parents. And she says, well, how, how come? What happened? What is this new suggestion? And then he says, I think it will help us save. I think my parents are old and they need the company and we can be of help. And she says, but that hasn't been the plan. I don't want to live with my in-laws. And um, also, how long are we going to stay there for? He isn't staying. He isn't forthcoming. And she's wondering, I really don't want to do this. I, I don't know what to do. It would change the dynamics. We need privacy and independence when we marry. We are young. And so she wants to know what she should do, the situation. And so far, we've been having such a good conversation with CC Abby, Mrs. Abigail in Cancer Mensa, <laughs> with Patience, AJ, all the way in the States, and Simon, also in Techiman. 
You remember we are live on Facebook and YouTube. Leave your comments under the comment section. I'll make sure I read some before we leave here. So before we went to the break, I remember we are going to look at what the Bible says. Patience, I'll come to you, then I'll come to CCRB. So the Bible clearly states that a man shall leave his mother and father, cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one. What is your understanding of that scripture? Do you think this man is moving or making a decision according to that plan? Is leaving and cleaving physical or it's more emotional and mental than literally packing your things and leaving and then moving in with your, with your spouse? What is your take on that? I think, um, you know, when a man gets married to a woman, they, they start a new family. They start their own family. So I think with this phrase, it's talking about actually the separation of actually going to start your own family. You know, there is a trend of um, the parents uh, from Adam, then there is a parent that got, gave birth, and then there's birth after birth after birth. If everyone was staying with their in-laws, then there, there's probably going to be a house that is a big old family generation in one house. Mm. But I think each generation, the man separates. The woman separates, they start a new family. The man separates. They start a new family. And that's why every family has their own beginning and their starting. Honestly speaking, it's uh, like, like the lady is saying, you know, I can completely agree with what she is saying about leaving the family to start your own. You know? The first year is even my biggest problem that mm. this is not the time to go and start it in an in-law's home. So when the Bible says we should separate, there's the reason for that because it comes with a whole lot of issue. Aside the fact of not being comfortable, maybe the things that um, she would have done if they were in their private home, how she would have dressed, if they were in their private home, how they would talk, how they would... And you know, it's generational issues too, right? The generation that um, his parents got married may not be the, it's not, not even may. It's not the same generation where they are getting married. So what their generation sees is not okay in marriage, may be okay in this generation. And that parent will not understand that. You know, the fact that um, it's, you know, my son, my son needs to be treated in a, a certain way that is special. Her definition of special may not be, you know, the new couple's definition of special because of generational gap. So I think this phrase really has a lot to do with going to start your new family and not really taking your whole family to go live in that home. Even. Mm -hmm with the kids coming in situation where you would say they will help you take care of the kids. Even with that, when it becomes a permanent, then it becomes them raising your child to be like your husband all over again, mm -hmm. right? Rather than you as the couple raising your child. Right. So it be, when it becomes a permanent thing, it's also another story to tell by if you and your husband raising your child, you're having your husband's parent raise your child all over again. Thank you so much, Patience, for that perspective. Sissy, I'll come mm -hmm. back to you. But some people will say in the Bible, we had people that lived with their in-laws. We had people that when they, when they got married, they lived with their in-law in the same land. And then they had their I kids. mean, the same land, yes. I mean, <laughs> so, I'm, I'm thinking about Abraham yeah, and all yeah, those people. Yeah. They probably had a land the size of like this union compound. Uh -huh. And then they didn't have houses like ours. They no. had tents. Yes. So everybody probably had their own, own tent. tent. Yeah. You weren't living in the yes. tents with them, right? Everybody <laughs> had their own tent. And they had a lot of space to go uh -huh. around. So, so you can't compare that to now. To now. And mm -hmm. it's, there are three words in that scripture. Leave. Mm -hmm. Cleave. Mm -hmm. One flesh. So this man should sit down and ask himself, if I'm in my parents' house with mm -hmm. my wife, have I left? Mm. How do I leave whilst living in my parents' house? Two, how do I cleave to my wife whilst living in the same space with my parents? How do we become one flesh whilst I'm still living 
in my parents' house within the same space. How do I do that? I, I think that he may have not thought through it. If he should sit down and think through it, leaving is physical, mm -hmm. is mental, mm -hmm. is emotional, is everything. Okay. You understand? Cleaving is also physical, emotional, whatever. Becoming one flesh, you and I know. It's physical. Yeah. It's everything. <laughs> you understand? So can I do that as mm -hmm. a man in control of my home whilst I'm still living in my parents' house? Yeah. He's only thinking about the money, but he should weigh all this. Because sometimes you get your head into it, and then you realize that, ah, I'm living in my parents' house. And if his siblings are still there, what kind of respect will they give to him? Mm. You went to marry a woman mm. and brought her to live with us whilst your 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 sisters and your brothers are still there in that yeah. house. Yeah. I mean, has he actually thought through it? Mm. Like I said from the beginning, if it's not the same space, she would consider. But within the same space, he has to actually sit down and think, how much money are you even going to save mm. to be able to get a mortgage or buy your own? How much money in this Ghana? How much money can you save, honestly, it take, a month? It will, it will take. So how yeah. long would it take you? That's why he's not probably been able to tell the woman that, okay, we'll stay for one year, we'll stay for two years, we'll stay yeah. for five years. Yeah. Because he, has, he, he, doesn't, he hasn't planned. If there's a plan on paper, you ask, I answer. You ask, I answer. And even that, something can happen to throw the plan off. Yeah. So he has to actually sit down and think through it. Mm. I don't mm -hmm. think he's done that. So um, is there ever a situation that will make living with your in-laws a good idea? Oh, yes. I mean, um, why not? Like I said from the beginning, I, and I actually know a couple who are living with their in-laws. You see, these in-laws are very, how do I say it? I know them personally. personally. Okay. So they don't clash. Mm. And it's been very clear that it's for one year. Okay. Very, very clear. Okay. And if this man is a man of his word, he knows that after one year... He needs to move. He needs to move. You understand? And there's that understanding, you understand, between the man and the wife. Mm -hmm. There's that understanding. But here, the understanding is not happening. Mm. Understanding has not come. It's, it hasn't <laughs> come. But if the lady... Because the lady could agree that, okay, I see what you're talking about. Well, we are not broke, but I also want us to be able to get our own place in the next five years. And I agree with you, maybe when we stay, I can sacrifice. When yeah. we stay within the same space, I can sacrifice because I know that within the next five years, we can. we'll be able to. So I'm okay with five years, you understand. But if she doesn't understand, it's not, it's not going to work. Yeah. But if she does, it will work. But it also depends on her in-laws. What are the expectations of this woman who's coming to live with them? Yeah. What do they expect her to do when she wakes up in the morning? Mm. What kind of help do they expect her to give to them? Mm. Are they willing to stay in their corner and allow them to also have their corner mm. within the same space? Mm. All these things have to be discussed before this moving situation happens. happens. Mm. Mm -hmm. Simon, I'll ask you, what should this lady do? How can this issue be solved? Do you think there's a solution at all? Do you think it's either we... Okay, if you're insisting we move, it ruins and ends the relationship, or we only move on this condition. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> Except with the fact that maybe two of them are telling me that they are financially broke and they cannot afford to rent a room to move in. You see, but the Bible said a man must. The word must means you are obliged. Mm -hmm. So. Whether you like it or yes, you should not overlook. So if absolutely nothing at all, the woman, you should be able to convince your husband that, indeed, moving to your parent room is not anything difficult. But have you looked at the consequences, the challenges that you are going to face? How are you going to cope? And in my first, I told you that, uh, there is an issue that is pending for a court determination as to whether or not this couple should be separate or should continue to marry, or because they, when they got married, they first lived in their parents' premises. So as the, uh, uh, the female of the marriage, I will advise her that she should try as much as possible and communicate to the husband that, as we, these are the issues that is at hand. Even if you don't have, I have. 
if the two of them don't have, they should understand each other and make sure that even if they are to move in, they must set boundaries. Certain boundaries means that there are certain places that the woman should not cross and then the parents should not cross. <laughs> they must respect each other. Do that. They must respect each other. Because we, other than that, you move in and later on you come back to say, say my in-laws don't respect me. And it is really a big challenge. That's it. So to my few advice that I will give to the woman is that in as much as your husband is insisting moving into the parents house, moving into the parents house, try as much as possible that you can raise some certain fund to help your husband and tell her that no, I know maybe you have challenges in uh, renting a room. This is how I can help. And if all these things is done and still the husband is still insisting they should move to the very man, the one thing that the uh, female must think is that maybe the man is not mature in life. Mm. He cannot take his own. Mm. He's been influenced by his parents. And that is the reason why he's insisting he should move. And the man, the woman should advise himself, herself rather, because it is yeah. very dangerous. Mm. Very, very, very dangerous. Mm. Someone mm. says if there are no boundaries set and they don't agree, she should advise herself. But it's interesting you say that, Simon, because talking of boundaries, we have to look at the situation in, uh, from the two angles. Your in-laws have been living in their own house all these years. You are not coming in to come and set boundaries for them in their house. And no. the lady too is coming in. She would want to be respected in certain ways. Great. But the issue is people have been doing things in their house for a long period a certain way. They are not going to change just because you have come in with your wife. If you want space and your own thing, go and find your own house and go and stay inside. <laughs> Patients, I'll come to you. I'll ask you, how can this problem be solved? Um, what should this lady do? And any final words you may have? All right. Um, sounds good. Um, this, this lady at this point um, needs to make it very clear hmm. to the man that I love your in-laws. In fact, in-laws in general, they are so great. If your husband is admirable and you love this man, he was raised by, a, a, you know, a parent, parent. you know. Yeah. And if your husband turned out very well, you got to know that the parents did a very good job, right? So at this point, you know, in-laws are very great to live with and all that stuff. But I think um, they are great for visit more than <laughs> permanent situation of living. You know, you can go and visit the in-laws. Um, they can come and visit you guys. You know, you have some good time. And then you say goodbye to each other. And then there is nothing permanent. That is very lovely. Um, but a permanent situation without an end date, because especially with this situation, um, the man has not been able to give an end date, so I call it um, permanent. You know, anything more than three months is permanent in a way, because <laughs> because after after three months, a lot can happen during that period. So if the man is not able to get a very clear, concrete way of and then this whole, you know, thing, then it's it's a, it's a problem. So the what the lady can do is kind of talk to him because if before marriage you guys are not able to communicate, then I don't know how you guys are going to make it in this lifelong journey. Mm -hmm. There got to be some kind of a communication and understanding between the two of you, whereby I'm sorry, I know what you're saying makes sense, but I don't think it's a good idea. Mm. I love your parents. I love your family. I love them all. But I don't think it's a good idea for us as a new couple to move in and live in the same personal space. So once that is communicated and the man has any intent of having um, the couple move in, I think they should be able to. And I like how the story included that they are trying to save money. That tells me that they are able to rent a place, but they just want to save money yeah. for later on. Yeah. Yes. So if you are able to rent a place, then be a man and then take your family and go and start your family at a different place. You've saved enough since you guys um, 
you've been living with your parents if you are able to save um, enough to buy a mansion i'm pretty sure you've gotten it already so mm -hmm. if if you haven't been able to do that all this while living with them it means that when your wife come it's still not going to change because you're still going to have more responsibility rather than yeah. less responsibility because now you have your wife with you in the home yeah. Thank you so much, patience. Sissy, Abby, I'll take, um, okay, is this issue, can we solve this problem? Yeah, yeah. And how do we solve it? And then any final words and advice you may have for this call? Okay, so I think that this man should check his approach. Okay. I think that he shouldn't go in saying, let's do it. Say, let's consider doing this. Okay. And give her the opportunity to speak her mind clearly, like patience has said. Make it very clear to him how she feels about this whole situation. You understand? And then... She should also try and meet him halfway. Okay. okay, this is how much money you're trying to save. So instead of us going to rent maybe a three-bedroom or a two-bedroom apartment, maybe let's start with a single room. Hmm. Let's start with that. Since we want to save money, yeah. so let's not go big. Mm -hmm. Let's start very small so mm -hmm. that we can still save money. Yeah. She should try and meet him halfway. But then if they have this conversation, and then this gentleman still insists that it's either we move into my parents' house or not, I think that they should seek counsel, go and see a counselor, and lay it bare before him or her. This is what they are saying. Now let this counselor look into this gentleman's face and let him know clearly what he's getting himself into. Because he hasn't experienced it before. Mm. He doesn't know what he's getting. He thinks it's going to be all right, but he doesn't know for sure. So he probably needs mm. someone, if they know someone who has tried that, maybe they should speak to the person and ask, okay, you tried this. How did it work out? Mm. Like Simon said, there's a case in court. Maybe if this gentleman hears this, it would help him reconsider. So they right. should seek counsel. And he should hear it from a counselor's mouth. This and this and this is what you're getting yourself into. Into. And there are some situations when you get yourself in them, it's such a difficulty getting out of them. It's so difficult to get out of it. And you know, it, is, it will be better for this woman to walk away from this marriage then get into this marriage with this situation and then later realize that I cannot live with this. Mm -hmm. And then you'd have to break up that home. Yeah. That would be worse. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree. And sometimes I always say that we speak of convenience, convenience, saving, saving. But sometimes you do this at the detriment of ruining a beautiful relationship you could have potentially had with your in-laws. So your parents are not so happy with your wife. Mm -hmm. Your wife doesn't like your parents because of the, this decision that was taken early on. And also we need to remember that suggesting to live with our parents is so easy and it comes easy because that's our life that's what we know and that's what we have known we can get away with a lot of things from our parents if your parents says do this you can get away and say you wouldn't do they may shout at you they will insult you but they love you you come back and come and eat their food and they'll say, oh but they love you but your wife or the spouse living with their in-laws doesn't have the liberty of being like that because the truth is parents extend grace to their children more than other people's children they don't mean to but it's, it's natural. natural it's natural. Yes. The grace your mother will give your sister when she doesn't clean the house is different from the grace your mother may give to your wife when she doesn't clean the house. So you need to consider. And let's flip it. If she asks you to go and live with her parents, mm -hmm. will you be okay with embracing the idea? Wouldn't you have questions? Wouldn't you be uncomfortable? Yeah. So you can sometimes put yourselves in their shoes and then be empathetic to how they are feeling. Be thoughtful of Yes, her. be thoughtful. Consider her feelings and what she's saying. And even if you have to live with your parents, we are talking about boundaries and all. It will be great. If maybe there should be uh, build a washroom and make her a makeshift <laughs> kitchen. Something to give her her own space. So she feels like a part of the house is her kitchen. But you can't tell your parents, and your in-laws, not to go here, not to go not there. Not to go there. It's their space. Uh -huh. So you don't tell them what to do, what, what to not do. to do. It's just a dicey situation. And issues like for the woman, especially the kitchen, the toilet, the bath, me personally, all I, I really don't care. I don't mm. watch TV. I'll be in my room and I'll be on my phone and I'm good. But the kitchen and the toilet and bath, it's like, it's a huge deal. And that's a place where mothers also consider a huge deal. So there'll be clashes. And I've, I've had so many experiences of people living with in-laws. At the end of the day, 
they went into their marriage very excited and happy to have such a relationship and it got ruined something as simple as put the knife here in the kitchen and mm -hmm. it was placed wrongly and mm -hmm. uh, it's just a lot of friction and women women we can be petty we don't mean to but we can be petty i'd like to take some comments before we go um let me see this one is from jacob also is this kind of discussion be extended a bit so i w i wish so to jacob so jacob is saying um what if the man had his own apartment but wants to bring the in-law to live with them Sorry I joined late, but is a problem coming because the house is for the in-law because she doesn't like the idea of living with the in-laws. So the house is for the in-laws, mm -hmm. and he's suggesting that they live with his parents. So Josephine says, hey, Evie, it isn't right to live with in-laws after marriage. If he still insists, then she shouldn't get into the marriage at all because the repercussions of staying with in-laws is too much to bear. Okay, um, let me see. Let me take another one. So this one is from... Mami Ajua Aqua, who says, you are not asking for too much. Sit him down and let him know you don't agree with that decision. No matter how good his parents are, it's still not the right decision to make. As a young couple, you need to bond, and you can't do that with his parents around. Don't let the desire of marriage make you compromise to this or on this because you want to be happy. No, because you won't be happy. If he isn't ready to move, then he isn't mature for marriage. If it's help that the parents need, you can visit them once in a while to give them a helping hand, or better still, a house help for them. Sweetheart, relax, okay, and be firm. If he decides to call off the marriage because of this, let him go. Mm -hmm. Rich Monyako says, my dear, God has given us marriage principles to follow so that we can be happy in marriage, but we choose to follow our own way, and it will lead us to problems. Think twice, my dear, because the guy is still a baby. Dad about Aringa. Oh, <laughs> he's not mature for marriage until he changes his mind. Don't marry him or else you either be a slave or a nanny. Hey, rich one. Hmm. So um, this one is from Annabelle who says, uh, then they should go and live on a tree. The man has told us the reason is to save the money and build, and you're still worried. If the guy is not forthcoming with how long they will live there, then she should come out with a plan and suggest to him that, uh, and suggest to him that um, what if they live there for a maximum of five years? Then so be it. Five years, no more, no less. Then they can get ground rules right from the get-go about how to separate their personal business from the home and stick to it. They should communicate the expectations, likes, dislikes to each other, and respect it and move with it. They should find ways of spending time outside to have their private moments. Mm -hmm. Chale, average rent is about 1000 to 1008 a month. Though. Multiply that by 12, and you have about 12000 to 21600 a year. My opinion, they should decide on how long they will live there. That is very important. And then save money as though they are paying rent and begin something immediately. If they procrastinate and get comfortable, any ayeka. Mm. But that's the thing. You're talking about talk with your in-laws about respect. How are you going to sit your in-law and say, see, I'm moving to your house, but please, I don't like these no. things. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> you obviously cannot that do be that. An interesting conversation. I can't imagine yeah. having that conversation. <laughs> you're moving like a thief yourself. You're like, <laughs> and then you're now going to tell, please, me, I don't like when you move your slippers at this stage. Are you? <laughs> I don't think that would ever work. Thank you guys so much for the conversation. I wish we had enough time. I feel like there's, there's so much more yeah, to say, right? I yeah, there's so much I feel more so too. Oh. Mm. <laughs> the one hour doesn't serve us. Hope TV. Maybe you should extend real talk or have a part two of this conversation. But thank you guys so much for coming. Sissy Abby, I am so glad you came. As I anticipated, it was a good conversation. Patience, thank you so much for joining us. I am so excited you could join us today. And again, I loved your perspective. Simon, last week wasn't a good one for you, but this week you came and your internet decided to act right. So we thank God for that. Thank you so, so much. Before we go, I'd like to remind you that um, if you have been looking for 100% plant-based milk, dairy-free, cholesterol-free, lactose-free, gluten-free, allergic-free, soya-free, 100% vegetarian, colors, additives, or preservatives, then your best bet is cocoa milk. Cocoa milk is sugar-free, low in calories, low in fats, and good for your well-being. You are guaranteed of plant protein, plant fiber, and plant fats. The good news is cocoa milk is good for every tummy from toddlers to seniors, including breastfeeding and pregnant women. 
even ulcers, diabetes patients, anemic and sickle cell patients. Cocoa milk is approved by the FDA of Ghana. It's vegan and vegetarian society in UK approved. You can get some from all Melcom supermarkets, Valley View shops, NS Chemist, and all trading shops. For inquiries and bulk purchase, call 0277444018. 0277 um, New Leaf Hospital and Hope Channel have joined forces to present you the Health and Wellness Summit. Coming to you live from AMSDA Church, adjacent New Leaf Hospital, Bam Bamiri Road, Teichiman from the 5th to 7th March 2022. Topics to be discussed include um, global burden of disease, a look at communicable diseases and non-communicable diseases, and accidents, blue zones living beyond 100, healthy habits for long life wellness, and mental well-being, a look at stress, addictions, and suicide. Speakers include Dr. Maurice Mensah, Pastor Kwesi Amwako, and Mrs. Baba Hammond. The Health and Wellness Summit is brought to you by Hope Channel and supported by New Leaf Hospital, the Adventist Church, Advent Press, and Valley View University. Official radio partner, Asta 103.9 FM, Techiman. Thank you guys so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure coming your way, and it's always a humbling feeling whenever you open your doors for us. We'll be back same time next week with yet another exciting episode. Thank you to my crew. I always say it takes a village to put together a TV show, and you guys do it so well. God bless you for your dedication, for your commitment, and for your love for his work. Thank you so much to Mrs. Satina Ifwa Arthur. You are a blessing. And um, we'll be back same time next week. Please do stay tuned. Remember, you can also send us your story via uh, Instagram, DM us, Facebook, or our email address, or even our WhatsApp number. Whatever it is you want to discuss, we'll find you the right panelist as we did today to have a good discussion. My name is Evie, and I'll be back same time next week. Please do enjoy the rest of the contents on Hope TV, and enjoy the rest of your day. Hope Channel changes.